All right, so you have crypto Twitter, you have threads, and Mark Zuckerberg starting to do something. And now you may have the first real Web3 social media platform or connector starting to come out. We're going to dive into that for you guys today. Coinbase is involved. It's going to be a fun one. And we'll get in deep. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. Uh, of course, we want to thank our sponsor, and that is Chart Prime. If you guys are looking to elevate your trading game, this is one of the tools to do it. And all you have to do is visit chartprime.com. You'll be able to get to a lot of their oscillators, many of their uh, indices that are built directly into the platform. We use this here, and we also drop a lot of our trading analysis over in our mastermind group right here through the Chart Prime videos. So make sure and check all that out. We'll leave a link down below. There's some discounts there for you, so hopefully this will be a good one for you guys. All right, so uh, everybody, I think, kind of understands what's going on with Twitter and threads, what's going on with Zuck and Elon. The good thing is, is that there's pressure in all markets to kind of move the ball forward. Here's Instagram threads surpassing 100 million users. That's pretty sizable because if they continue on this growth pace, they will outpace Twitter in its entirety. Remember, a lot of the users coming over from Instagram, which has uh, like a billion users. So uh, quite a bit different than what's going on uh, within the Twitter space. I'd love to get you guys' feedback. Drop some comments down below. Hit the like button if you like what we're doing here. And let me know, are you using more Twitter or are you jumping over to threads? Here was a first tweet. Coinbase wallet says, hey, discover new friends, share your personal QR code, invite some friends or chat. Basically, they're rolling out a new uh, program which is uh, identified and plugged into the Lens Protocol. Go back and search some of our videos. We've covered Lens Protocol here on the show before. You'll start to understand. We'll play a lot of clips for you guys here today. Uh, it's going to be a good one. So you're going to be able to take your chats pretty much anywhere. There's some secure messaging in this that is tied into the Coinbase wallet and the ability to start to do some very interesting th things around DMs and the, the capacity to keep all that stuff private, which you would have to in a financial app. So I want to get into a couple of clips here, and we're going to go into uh, some of those. But before I go there, this is a, an interesting angle right here. This is how many Coinbase users were in 2022. May not have grown a lot here, but that's 100 million, 108 million users up from 56 million people in 2021. Imagine how fast this is going to grow if an ETF launches, if Coinbase comes out from underneath this, I mean, that could go into easily a quarter of a billion to half a billion people in this next bull run. These are real users, and I think everybody understands how important that app is. It's kind of like your banking app. It's almost as important. You're opening it every day. You're in it. So this is a big deal. I want to get into some of these clips here. The first clip I'm going to play is around social apps in general. Listen in. Now, when we think of a social application, we might think of Twitter or Instagram or things like that, but there are actually social features built into all types of applications that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So things like GitHub are actually social applications because you follow other people and you see a feed of all of the, the actions that they're doing. I think it's like 4.85 billion people are using social applications today. And therefore we kind of are really broadening the scope of the type of user that might be able to be onboarded into Web3 via this mechanism that might not be that interested in maybe financial use cases. Now, like we might put up with this shit, honestly, because we're like crypto people and we love this, but the average person, this is a very, very bad experience, you know? All right, so I think he hits on a couple of good points there. And one of those is that social applications, these wall gardens that have been created over the years, have really put a lot of constraints on us. It's also kind of flooded us our, our inboxes with some pretty toxic things. There's a lot of challenges. I agree that within these ecosystems, if you had social applications that were just real and you could really communicate with the right kind of audience, the hyper-targeted niche audiences, it's kind of like what happens here on YouTube with channels like ours. You end up with a very niche audience. Uh, it works. And I think people can start to appreciate that. So I, I'm definitely in line with what he's going on there. Let's go into a little about what Lens is and how it might work. Lens isn't an actual application. It's just a protocol for people to build applications. We have developers building all sorts of applications. So LensTube, for example, is an application that came online. And it's cool because when a new application comes online, you sign up uh, one time, but then you go to these new apps and you automatically have all of the followers that you've built over time across all of the applications. So when LensTube came online, I had all of the followers that I had built up from using Lenster. 
And then you had things like Butterfly and Orb and um, Ooh La La and all these different applications. But when something does happen to come online that you do resonate with, you don't have to build up your following again from the ground up. You automatically have that built-in user base. That content might also be displayed across other applications as well. So even if you're only creating on Ooh La La, you might have that content be made visible on other applications as well, which is really cool. All right, so that just answered the problem that a lot of people are faced with on threads right now. Because threads, if you're not an Instagram user, you had to go create an Instagram account essentially to go develop a threads following. And that is tied into Instagram. Plus you had already put a lot of investment over in Twitter, but your followers don't follow, follow you unless you coerce them to follow you on threads. So I like the fact that this is intermingled and it is a protocol rather than an app. This is another value. And remember, this is where Coinbase is going to be running a lot of this new uh, messaging service is within the Lens protocol. So we got a lot to show you here because there's some really interesting things, pretty mind blowing uh, about is about what is happening right now in the social aspect. Let's go to, into the Polygon app because this is essentially what all this is running on. At the very core of Lens is a set of smart contracts that's deployed to Polygon. But the real power around what uh, Lens has been able to do has more to do with the infrastructure and the design decisions around the API, in my opinion. If you can abstract away the gas and you can abstract away the signing of the transactions, then you now have a user experience that's on par with something like Twitter. And then if you start adding the features that are enabled only by decentralized technologies like blockchains, you can then offer a better user experience than, and, and maybe a better um, value proposition than what's possible with traditional infrastructure. All right, so again, this solves a lot of challenges. We've already known Polygon is a, a really a big winner here in terms of low cost. And this is one of the things that's going to have to happen in Layer 2, probably from Polygon and others like them, that will be able to handle massive adoption because that's the key here. Remember, back to the numbers on Coinbase, right now 100 million likely. And remember, that was up from 50 million the prior year. And that was a, a growth year, 21, 22 what we'll see in 20, 23, 24, and 25, that's where we get into critical mass. That's gonna be a very uh, very special thing to keep a, a hold of. And the key here is, is where, all, where is all this gonna be stored? So data is a very big part of this. We've talked about this many times. Play this next clip on Arweave. And then when you upload an, uh, a new publication to Lens, you need to store your metadata somewhere. So most of the time people are using either Bundler with Arweave or they're using IPFS, we're seeing more and more people kind of though leaning towards Bundler. Bundler is a protocol in Arweave that enables permanence and uh, immutability, whereas IPFS is, uh, is more about immutability but not really permanence unless you use something like Filecoin, which is really a little bit more complicated, I think. All right, so uh, just to, for many of you, some of, some of you may be watching for the first time, is this a crypto channel, is this a tech channel? What we are believing in is that there's this new evolution of technology that's happening and will happen in Web3, and it's the new internet, okay? So imagine if we had had YouTube back in 1996 through 2000 when the birth of the internet as we know it today was done. We're getting a chance to chronicle a lot of what's happening with all these new technologies, and you get a chance to get a front row seat on this. So it's a really cool thing. Bundler is what he's talking about. Scales to millions of transactions per second. Uh, instant uploads on this under eight millisecond. That's pretty fast. Three to four lines of code uh, for each, so it's very seamless and you can do uh, all sorts of token integration. This is where we get into federated social media. This is something that has been theorized out there by the masses, uh, but no real movement. I know Jack Dorsey you know, was trying to do something like this with Noster, but it not necessarily hitting on all fronts because again, they're thinking in old school mentality, web two mentality, not web three where everything becomes social ID connected to everything, much like what's happening here with Lens Protocol. All right, so looking at our weave, let's jump over to how this works within Lens Protocol. So this is one of the uh, communications. Think of this as a tweet. And then if you follow this, you can see the transaction right here, NFT address, I'm just going to click that tab and it goes right to the transaction, as you can see, all tied into it. And then remember, going back to this, you've also got the NFT address that is also linked into this. So there's Polygon Scan right there. So this is true Web3 social media. 
Now, remember when Jack Dorsey said he didn't think it was possible to do this in Web3 and social into what maybe the next evolution of the internet would be, that there would need to be a kind of a proxy between Web2 and Web3. This may be the answer. And if this is the answer, it is going to connect to everything Web3, and it's going to make it super simple to be able to go in and cross apps, much like what they just showed uh, over there. So very interesting aspects. I think this is an intriguing element. I want to play this next clip right here on composability. And then another big component of Lens is composability. If you are a developer building a new app, you might in the past have to start from zero. But now if you launch an app into the Lens ecosystem, you have a built-in user base of 100x thousand people, which once we release, once we remove the permissioned access, it will be even more than that. All right, so when you look at what, what they're talking about there is the permissioned access right here on OpenSea, here's the profiles, Lens uh, protocol profiles. There's 118,000 in there right now. Uh, they're a little pricey, but this is, you know, it's for the early adopter that's jumping into this. So you can actually get in on this by just purchasing one of the profiles. And, you know, right now trading at about 100 bucks in USDC, 0.64 ETH, uh, et cetera. Most, and it's not necessarily, because some of these names are unique, but uh, some of them have nothing to do with your name, but I think the key here is that eventually your name would be available just like a regular social media name that you picked up on threads or Twitter. So a uh, very interesting uh, idea around how this works. Now I'm going to get into uh, the next component here. I want to talk about widgets and uh, DMs on that. Let's go into this one. And then we also have our new widgets, which allow you to kind of do integrations with Lens and just two lines of code as well. Um, we also have um, a kind of a standard now with XMTP for DMs on Lens. So you can tap into the 100X thousand users on Lens using XMTP with just a few lines of code. All right, so XMTP is essentially a secure messaging system that rides within this, uh, it's this ecosystem that's going to cross-platform across all these different kinds of components within the Lens protocol. If you look at how this works, building, you can kind of see this, but the cool thing is, is it actually goes in and I'm going to play this little short video here that kind of shows how it connects into all the different applications. So if you might be in another application, but you're getting a DM from this application, they're interlinked because remember the user base is all centralized. So I shouldn't say centralized, all connected via the lens protocol. So this gets back into a pretty cool aspect. And as you look up here on the page, right there it is, uh, Coinbase. Uh, a big rollout on this. Unstoppable, of course, has already been talking about and using this uh, as well. And again, we've covered Lens Protocol before on the show and what this might mean. Now we're seeing this in real use case. So they've been very busy uh, during this, uh, this bear market uh, growing. So pretty cool stuff. Now I want to go over to a tweet here by Lens Protocol. New bookmark feature is live on uh, Lenster, allowing users to add bookmarks to their favorite posts. There's also a new not interested option. Let me zoom in on that for you guys. This is important. New not interested option for content that doesn't match you. Basically, you're getting to groom the ability to groom your own algorithm. Man, wouldn't that be great on YouTube? Wouldn't that be great on Twitter? Wouldn't that be great on Facebook? Um, none of that exists today because the algorithm is controlled by walled gardens. That's the difference in Web3 Social. And it's the challenge that completely goes a different direction than what Web2 has been about over the last 20 years of how social media has been built. This is a big step in a very interesting uh, way. All right, so I'm going to go to another clip. We're going to go to clip seven. Uh, this is the collection feature. Take a look. Um, collects are really interesting, actually, because like in Twitter, you have a like, a comment, and a retweet. In Lens, you have a like, a comment, a mirror, and you have a collect. And a collect is when you take a piece of content that someone's put out there and you mint that into a digital asset, which is uh, essentially like an NFT. We had a, an artist a few days ago drop a song that they had written years ago that they had kind of forgotten about. And they said, hey, I just wanted to kind of throw out this, this song I'd created a while ago. Um, if you want to support me, you can collect this for like a dollar or two dollars. And he had like, I think three or four thousand dollars worth of collects from that drop that he just threw out there on there. So this is important because it opens up the creator community 
and it addresses the challenge that creator communities have had. Really, the only, I think, social media platform that has addressed creators to a level that has been super successful has been YouTube. Um, no others have really done it. Twitter has not done it. Facebook has not done it. Everybody's tried. Even Instagram and TikTok are still struggling with that. And the way they're doing it is most of the creators are embedding in content. I think this is an interesting way. And if you look at the tweet right here, to collect module, lens API, adding new features, put time limits on any free collect, that's an intriguing aspect. Define the supply and, the, and even the end date so it's an exclusive. And you can go free or paid. So this again gets back into a way that you can communicate to an audience. If you're a creator, um, you could be any kind of business out there that has services and, and maybe brand elements that you want to do around retail, limit time offers, all those kind of things could apply into something like this. It's big for business, not just big for consumers and creators. Businesses will be involved in this as well, and of course Coinbase using in this uh, in the right way. All right, so this was another cool feature, share earnings with as many as five creators with custom percentage splits. This gets into, think about a podcast that has multiple people. We've talked about this before. You could kind of do it with podcasting 2.0 and sharing Satoshis when someone's on a podcast. You can actually credit that within the podcasting 2.0. The only thing is, this is on steroids because it's going across uh, all sorts of platforms, all sorts of ecosystems, apps, maybe your banking app, maybe your um, exchange app, maybe your social app, maybe your you know drawing app, whatever it might be. The key here is it's starting to spread across all of these and you have the opportunity to kind of go into that next layer of sharing. All right, so this is our eighth clip. This is getting into custom modifications. Take a look. So one of the really interesting things that Lens enables that isn't really possible with the traditional social media or really anything else that I know of is extensibility around the actual features of the protocol itself. This would almost be like if you were using Twitter and you were like, oh man, it would be so freaking cool if you could do this thing on Twitter. But obviously you're not gonna send a pull request to Twitter and they're not gonna merge it, right? You can actually do that with Lens. You can create a custom module. You can then essentially submit it to our uh, you know, uh, repository and get it merged and you can start using it, but everyone else in the world can start using it as well. And now you've added a new feature to Lens. This is just a couple of examples of what that might look like. So these are uh, displaying some custom modules that are available that enable you to kind of set settings around your sharing of content. Maybe you want to split revenue for anything that gets generated through this with this number of people and blah, blah, blah. All right, so cool meaning if you're a developer, you're gonna be able to deploy quick and easy. If you look at this uh, tweet right here, this was standy.lens, you know who that is, right? Uh, testing my first poll on Lenster, and this is powered by Snapshot Labs. So there it is right there in full functionality with you know, the Supreme Emperor of Polygon. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into a little bit further. I wanna dive into uh, this map right here, this kind of shows a little bit about what's happening within the dev system. This gets a little deep in the weeds here. But if you'll notice here, a lot of these are in the application format. The bucket they're in, either activation, incubation, then the format, you know, social media, monetization, analytics. So the key is there's going to be so many people building on this. And this being a protocol, again, Federated social media opens it up in across to where anybody can adopt it, start to utilize these apps, almost like plugins or widgets. All of this ties in and enhances a user experience within any kind of thing, whether it's a loyalty app, you know, a Coinbase app, or anything that really would apply lots of users in one centralized place. So if this works, this is the Twitter killer. If this works, Threads has no chance. The key here will be scalability when masses come in. 118,000 people in the test right now. So it's a very critical uh, statement that's gonna be hitting right now. Another uh, element I wanted to show just a little bit about some of the apps. This is kind of, think of this as app store, but for just the LIMS protocol. Again, already kind of coming out pretty well uh, overall. There's LensTube right there. There's Lenster as an example. Text, images, video, audio social media platforms. Again, I think these are, are going to be very interesting. Remember, you're not trying to build an audience on just one because it crosses the entire protocol. Very intriguing uh, as well. 
All right, so let's go to our last clip here and take a look at, uh, at the last one, and then I'll, I'll finish up here with Orb. Let's go to this clip. So some other things that you can do with your Linster Reflect, which will send your posts automatically through to Twitter. Cultivator.cc, where you can type in your handle and look at your network in this really novel way where you can see who you're following. You see the bounce out is who you're following and the bounce back in is who's following you back. Let's look at his network. Oh, there's a lot of crossover there between Zanzi and I. All right, so what he just showed here is one of the most advanced tools. You see this right now in natural language processing, NLP technology where they look at sentiment weights, what they call word clouds in the old days of Twitter. All of that being applied in real time across something like this that could leverage across different kinds of, of little lens protocol apps. This gets extremely interesting. And again, remember, this is a Web3, so it's more federated out there. Last up here, just to show you uh, some of the things that uh, will show up here within. This is Orb. Launching embedded links in preview chat. You can now share any link in the post, profile, list, etc. But you can kind of see some of the elements that they've already started to build in. Here's that really cool feature inside threads that we like, which is this new way of showing enhanced images that's already built into this. Uh, tap on notification to navigate toward a post. So right there, we're not getting that right now. Again, this would be across all platforms, all ecosystem elements. Um, Pretty interesting. And then preview for all shared links. This is another feature I think needed to be built in. The fact that we have so many companies and projects and people and developers working in this platform, in this ecosystem, and now you have companies like Coinbase adopting it into their pro protocol, secure messaging. This is a big step, people, in the right direction. And it could be the thing, maybe we're getting, a, you know, there's nothing here on threads and the real activity could be brewing right now on Lens Protocol. We're going to be diving into more of this, of course, as things happen and start to roll out because it is in somewhat the beta. Uh, we'll keep you updated on uh, all that good stuff. If you guys are following us over on the podcast, make sure and jump over here to the YouTube channel because you just missed a whole lot of visuals on this of why this might be the future of social media. And it's an important one. I think you guys should listen in. And of course, if you're not in our Diamond Circle, get in there. It's very easy. We'll leave a link down below. And of course, you can catch me out there on Twitter until I get a Lens Protocol ID. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.